All right, so I made a little purchase here the day after Christmas for myself, and it's supposed to be two shelves, and I need some storage over my workbench, and I'm just lacking storage. I got junk everywhere. I never know where anything is. I just need more storage. So if you ever look up cabinets to put in a garage, they're super expensive, like 600 bucks for some junk, metal junk, you know? And I was doing a little research and I thought, you know what, what about Ikea? Ikea always has cheap crap. I've never actually bought anything from Ikea, but everyone tells me about it. The nearest store to me is over an hour away and I have no interest in going to it. So I went on their website and turns out they ship. So I bought two cabinets, they're kitchen cabinets, 30 inches by 12 by 12. So I'll have a 60 foot or 60 inch long cabinet. So give me five feet of cabinet. And hopefully I can store a bunch of stuff in there like spray paints and cans and just stuff, you know, and get it off my workbench and out of piles and organized. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Now if you see over the workbench between the two windows there, I'm hoping that I can put that cabinet right up there. And that'll be awesome because I, you can see all the junk I got everywhere. I can't deal with this anymore. It's just killing me here, but let's check it out. Now, this box supposedly has two cabinets in it. And I'm kind of skeptical saying this box looks way too small to have two cabinets in it. It could, you never know. And Ikea is supposed to be packaging geniuses, so I'm not sure, but let me open it up and I'll show you what we got. All right, let's check it out. There actually is two boxes in here. I'm kind of shocked about that. And anyways, a little story. I remember a buddy of mine lived in a condo and he was getting ready to sell it. And he, he wanted to update the kitchen and he bought all the kitchen cabinets from Ikea. And they all came in boxes like this and you had to assemble them. And it took him like two weeks to assemble all the crap, but he got all new cabinets for his condo for like 400 bucks or some ridiculous thing. So he was happy and it looked really nice and he moved and it served his purpose, got him more money for his place, but check this out. So these things were $31 a piece. So I got two of them for 62 bucks plus shipping. I don't know, it was about $80 total for everything. So I don't know, let's take one out and see what it's all about here. Well, it's kind of just what I expected. It's a bunch of particle board crap. I mean, it feels pretty solid and I'm not gonna be like storing transmission cases in it or something. It's gonna be maybe some, you know, boxes of tools like a cordless drill box or spray can, maybe some paint cans or spray cans and stuff like that. It's not gonna be crazy. So I don't have the energy to put this together tonight and I gotta find the instructions. I'm assuming you gotta use glue and stuff like that, but I don't know, I gotta find the instructions. It's probably on the other end of this box, right? But the finish that they put on there, I don't know what it is, but it, it's a nice feel. And I figure for $31 a piece, I can't go wrong. I've been looking online for used kitchen cabinets and that kind of stuff, and there's nothing. Just nobody has it, so. For the price, you can't go wrong, but I'm probably gonna have to put two stringer boards on the wall to mount them to. I got some one by four pine that I could use for that, but we'll see. All right, back to the shelf. It's called a Knox Holt. I give you these great directions here. The paper they're printed on reminds me of like a coloring book that I had when I was a kid, but I have these great illustrations here these cool people and at the end it says call Ikea if you got a problem wonder if the call centers in Sweden or something you know Wouldn't that be funny so this doesn't look too bad this is just the normal standard cam lock crap that you get so all right let me put this thing together we'll be back all right so I got the main box together here and this is something that I wasn't clear on how it would hang on the wall they have these stupid uh, metal brackets here. There's this flimsy back that's going to go over it. 
and evidently you're going to use these big huge holes these holes are big they're like five eighths of an inch or something all cabinets i ever put up had a nailing strip across the back that you put big cabinet screws into the wall like two and a half inch long screws so this is kind of a a flimsy setup so we'll we'll see how that's going to turn out at the end here um, to the point where I just got to put some nails around the outside and we just got the two doors to screw on and they're done it's taken me all of five minutes so far it's no big deal all right well it's all together except being hung they recommend that after you hang it you put the doors up at that point which makes sense it'll be a little lighter and easier to get to those screw holes and it turns out that they give you these crazy little gizmos that go over the screw holes so it bridges the gap between that huge hole and the size of a screw. Guess you don't have to be as accurate that way when you drill your holes in the wall. So I'm sure that there won't be any studs where I'm trying to mount these things, I can guarantee it. So we'll probably end up having to put some stringer boards across the back of the wall so that there's something for this to screw into, but we'll see. All right, so now I got the cabinets together, I got to figure out where to mount them. And I went in my kitchen and I looked around at some cabinets there and measured their height. And I came up with about 68 inches as a pretty nice height for these things to be. And the problem is when you got a 30 inch cabinet, it's very hard to um, get to the studs where they need to be to mount it. So that Ikea thing I showed you before, it just has those two holes. And I can pretty much guarantee there's no way that those holes are going to line up with where I want these cabinets to actually be, you know. So I'm going to use my stud finder and look for some studs on the wall. And we'll go from there. Well, after uh, doing a little more direction reading on these stupid cabinets here, the way that they want you to hang them is to actually have some blocking between your studs so that you'd have to run horizontally you know a piece of wood between two studs and screw into that in order to do that you would have to cut the sheetrock off the wall hammer in some blocks between the different studs put the sheetrock back on patch the drywall all this stuff that would just be a ton of work and I'm not willing to do that so I came up with a shortcut here if this was going to go in someone's actual kitchen I would do it the right way. But since just going in my garage, I'm gonna show you the alternative method that I've come up with. So here's my wall. I got a stud here, a stud here, and a stud here. None of them line up to this 28 inch gap that's in the factory holes in this cabinet. Um, about here is where I want the edge of my cabinet to be. And that will center the two cabinets between these two windows. So, the first stud is here. I'm not gonna measure it, but it's four or five inches in. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna make some strips of wood that will go inside the cabinet, and they'll screw onto the anchors that Ikea provided, and then I can screw those one by four pieces of pine into the studs without cutting the sheetrock. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's our cabinet again. And you see the two factory mounts that I was referring to. And they don't line up to any of the studs. In fact, they're 28 inches apart, so they would never line up to studs in anybody's house. I don't know if uh, in Europe things work that way or something, but here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a piece of one by four, I'm gonna span it across the top of the cabinet, inside the cabinet. Let me just kind of lay this out here. So that will go right against the back. I'm gonna use two bolts and actually bolt it into those holes. And then I can put screws right through this and right through the back, right into the wall. And again, this isn't a finished cabinet. This is going in my garage. And who cares if there's a one by four strip in there? It's not gonna take up enough space that it matters to me. And I don't care that it's in there. If this was above my kitchen sink and I had to put, you know, fancy china in there or something, I'd be doing it the right way. 
but it's worth the shortcut here to not have to cut open the sheetrock and all that crap and get into this big surgery on my wall. All right, so I got one end squared up and I'm gonna cut it here to 28 and three quarters. And I'm probably gonna have to shave a hair off, but it's kind of drizzling out. So I'm just gonna do this and not film it because I don't want my stuff getting wet. Okay, I got the board cut. And now there's one other thing I gotta do. There's two pieces that bump out on this cleat here. And what I did is I, I put my piece of wood in there and I pushed it and it made two little dimples. I just drew two marks where those dimples were. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a chisel and just make a little carve out so that the board can go over those two little bumps. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that should allow it to sit flush against the back of that bracket at this point. So let's get to it. Instead of using a chisel, I'm just gonna use a good old fashioned handsaw I'm just going to give it a couple strokes at maybe about a 45 degree angle right where my two lines are and that should make the relief for that thing. The little strap is about twice as wide as a saw blade so I'll make maybe two cuts there and we'll see if it fits. All right so here they originally gave you these things that if you were screwing it into the wall the way you're supposed to you would put this over the hole and it's got a little notch for the screw. I took a file and I hogged out the top just a hair. Now we can fit a quarter inch bolt in there. So you can see what I've done on the other side. The bolt just hanging there, but I'm actually putting this behind the thing between the press board and the bracket. And then I can put the bolt in from the back to attach our cleat. So I just put my screwdriver in here and pry back a hair and it flexes the back and I can slide that right in and we're good. All right, so I've marked out on my board here where my two bolts will come through. So I'll just drill two holes there with a quarter inch bit and we'll be good. All right, so I got that piece across the top here on the first one and now we got to do the same thing to the other cabinet. So. I just got to tighten up those two bolts and we should be ready to fasten this one to the wall. Exciting. All right, so both bolts are tightened up and this one's ready to go. On the back of these things, they had a recess here where the screw would go through and the bolt head on the bolt just happens to recess in that thing perfectly. When I put this one together, I should have put the white side in and I put the white side out. Oh well, couldn't change it and the instructions don't tell you about it. And I never even noticed that I had two colors. Then when I got to the second cab and I said, oh crap, I screwed up the first one. But all right, let me get this marked on the wall and we'll screw it up. All right, so I got the first cabinet screwed into the wall. So I'll check it out with you. All right, so I got my level up there. I was able to screw my cleat into two studs and I'm using these old box of cabinet screws I had. They're two and three eighths inches long. And it seems to be good. It's at a good height. I can reach it readily here from the workbench and it doesn't interfere with any operations on the bench. So I got to put the cleat in the second cabinet and then I can put the doors on them and we should be good to go. All right, so now I'm clamp the two cabinets together and putting some one inch screws between the two to suck them together drilling a little pilot hole first and using a hand screwdriver you don't want to damage the particle board so you want to make sure you got a nice coarse thread screw i just happen to have these box of brass screws that are one inch laying around and they're working perfect well guys that's pretty much a wrap here i got the doors up the only thing i got to do is i got to get some door knobs because these white cabinets are going to be black in about a week in this garage. If you were woodworking, they'd be fine. But when you're dealing with greasy crap, they're going to get dirty. So let me get some nice knobs and then uh, I think we'll be in good shape. All right, so there's the finished product. The doors need a teeny bit of adjustment on the leveling of the hinges, but I'm really happy with this thing. And if we come over here and... Uh, Open up this side. I already put a couple things in there. It's going to be perfect for little spray cans and 
screws and paint and all kinds of little things that are all over my workbench that need a home. Tape, let's see, what else could go in here? Something like a spool of wire. All this stuff is gonna be beautiful up there. So next up, cleaning this mess.